Hello YouTubers and fellow preppers. I'm Geordie Prepper and today I'm doing another presentation on handbrake. We're going to be looking at some more advanced options and if you're a YouTuber and you're a prepper, you know, it can take a long time for your videos to upload but using my previous video which went over the basics of handbrake and I'll leave a card which links to that first initial video I made that which basically just gave an introduction to handbrake and using those settings which I go through you can basically reduce the file sizes of your videos and the content and you can upload them quicker which is important because if you're running a channel you you don't want to have a computer uploading for hours and hours and hours and especially if you're in the field a lot and you have a slower internet connection with them what you do at home base then it can obviously be very frustrating and you know there may be problems whilst it's uploading and then you've got to redo it again so having a smaller file size increases your chances of getting the file uploaded processed very quickly so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the more advanced options in Handbrake and I thought I would do this by showing you the file size of my previous video. So we have here the previous video that I did on Handbrake. I'm just going to share it now, export it to a file. All right, so our final project has exported and we'll look at the file size. You look at the exported file and you see its size is 916 megabytes. We go to Handbrake. We are in Handbrake now and we are using the old settings. We're just gonna do a comparison and you do your usual checks. You make sure that there's no cropping. You can look down here, you can see these two sets of numbers should be the same, they're not. So just go in, make sure that they're the same. Make sure there's no cropping, which will show up here. And you add the video, you check your audio. Like I said in my previous video, the audio is often a very overlooked option. Obviously YouTube, basically compresses the audio that you're doing anyways so there's no point having it at its original quality. You add the video to the queue and you process the file and then using the old sentence we'll see the size of the file. So the exported file from our video editor program is 960.3 megabyte. The handbrake optimized file, just using the simple settings that I went through in my previous video, the file size is then 92.2, which is just under 10% of its original size. What we'll do now is we'll look at the advanced settings and then we'll do a comparison. Okay, so we've exported the file using the basic settings, which I did in my previous video. We've seen the file size is just under 10% of its original size. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at the advanced settings and we're going to hopefully reduce that file even further without compromising on the quality. So you can see here I have just three settings. The original setting here, which I went through in my last video, the basic settings is this one from July 2015. That was the setting which I used for all of the videos. I have two other settings here, one for 720p, 
one for 1080p. This video is a 1080p video, so I'm going to select the 1080p settings. You can see here that the Use Advanced Options panel is now ticked, which is what you should do the first time that you're selecting the Advanced Options. This panel here then becomes visible, which is the Advanced panel. Now, unfortunately, the audio settings don't get saved even on the presets, so it's always worth checking the audio panel. So that's the first thing that I do, is I go in sequence throughout all of these. Obviously subtitles, I don't go into that one because I don't put any subtitles in my videos yet and I don't put any chapters in the videos yet. Panels I look at is video, audio and advanced. The advanced, you only need to go in there once. I'll talk you through the settings that I've got and then once you make your preset, you don't really have to go into that section again. So first of all, at a glance, you just want to make sure that the size of the video is correct. There's no cropping. Once you've checked that, you check that the, uh, the advanced options panel is checked. And then what we do here is we make sure that it's constant quality. Now this slider here, this gives you the options for quality and a bigger file size and lower quality and a smaller file size. Now this slider here you'll want to play around with but I've left it at RF26 and I find that on this setting the mod there were previously in the past and I honestly can't see any any artifacts, I can't see any anything in there which compromises on the quality. Once you're happy with your video settings go to your audio settings change the sample rate to 44.1 and 128 kilobits and I've mentioned previously as to why I choose this YouTube already probably downsizes it to a lower bit rate now the advanced panel here is where you want to be so on the encoding section here you want your reference frames to 4 maximum B frames default make sure that the Kabak entropy coding is ticked 8 times 8 transform is ticked Weighted P frames is ticked, pyramidal B frames at the default setting. On the analysis section, the adaptive B frames to default, adaptive direct mode to default, motion estimation method default, uh, subpixel ME and MUD decision, you want to change this to 7, colon, RD and all frames. The adaptive quantization is just at the default, it's in the middle. Psychovisual rate distortion is in the middle. Psychovisual trellis is all the way to the left. Now you'll see the here the custom X264 advanced option string. These values in this window will change depending on what you change in this section here. So you don't really need to input anything in this section really. But there is one section which uh, is worth just checking that it does it is in here. And that's just to make sure that sub Q equals 7 is in there. The section over here is just all default on the right hand side. Make sure that you set a preset for your video so that you can just select it and then you don't have to go into that section again. But like I said, you do have to go into the audio section here and just make sure that the sample rate is 44.1 and the bit rate is 128. There is just one section here which is worth looking at and if your camera is recording or if you're in the habit of recording 720p or 1080p video and you're doing it at 60 frames per second there's not really much point in doing that to be honest basically all that does is make your video twice as big if you have twice as many frames then the video portion of your file is going to be twice as big and for most purposes, unless you're shooting very fast sequences such as uh, close quarter combat, if you're doing anything like uh, action such as filming vehicles moving at speed or you're shooting sports, um, there's no real need to shoot at 60 frames per second. So, But if you are in the habit of doing that, 
and it's at source in the camera at that setting then what you can do is you could set your settings at 30 frames per second and that will instantly drop the size of the video portion of your file in half. Make sure also that it's at a constant frame rate on this. So once you've looked at the advanced, you've checked that everything is set up correct, then make your YouTube setting. Give it a preset. We'll just call it new settings. The picture size should already, once you've um, checked it in the picture settings, it should default to the correct size. But just double check and make sure that these settings here are the size of the video which you filmed at source in the camera. Use picture filters, just make sure that's ticked. And you can put a description here. Um, we'll just call it new settings using advanced features. And it'll appear in the right hand side here. And whenever you open Handbrake, just click that. The advanced tab will be exactly how you set it up. The audio, like I said, won't be, so just triple check again when you are just about to export. This section shouldn't change at all. It should be how you've saved it in the settings. Then you can set this RF value more towards the left. This will reduce the file size and it won't affect the quality of the videos. If you shoot in a faster action, then you'll want to drop this to the right and you'll want to set the RF value lower. But like I said, I've, at the minute I have it set at 26. So what we'll do is we'll export the video now using these advanced settings and then we'll do a comparison. What I'll do is I'll just change the name on this so that it doesn't overwrite and then we can see the two side by side. Add the video to your queue and then hit start. All right guys, so the export using the advanced settings that we set up is now complete. What we'll do is we'll look at a comparison between the old settings and the file size and then look at the file size using the advanced settings. So go to your folder, which is the export folder for Handbrake. And we look and see here that using the old settings, the file size again was 92.2 megabyte. Using the advanced settings, the file size is now 51.7 megabyte. Now that's quite a significant saving. What you can do, obviously, is experiment with this constant quality RF setting. I have it on 26 and the complexity in video changes, obviously, the, the subject matter, how much movement there is going on in the scene, the complexity of the scene, that obviously means that advanced settings, you may find that the reduction in the file size is actually quite minimal. But what, like I said, what you can do is you can play around with this RF slider here and you can basically find out the optimal setting. I would suggest that you do this on a short piece of video. Just put the slider left, right, higher and lower Look at the file size and then open up the file and just see if you can notice the difference in the quality and what you'll do is you'll find a setting which is right for you. I would suggest taking clips out of your old videos and you know just the general subject and the complexity of the scenes in your videos will pretty much be across the board quite, quite similar. So you'll be able to find a setting on this RF scale which suits your videos and gives you a very good optimal file size for your exported files. So this is the conclusion to the Handbrake Advanced Settings. I hope that you found it useful and I hope that it reduces your files and it just means that we can get our message of preparedness out there quicker with less problems when it comes to uploading things into YouTube. Uh, in the past I've had some problems with it and by looking at Handbrake and utilising Handbrake these have made my upload times much quicker with far fewer errors and it just means that we can get our message of preparedness up into YouTube uh, to reach the audience a lot quicker 
which I think is very important in these times. So thank you very much for watching. Be safe, be prepared, and I'll see you next time.